I, 34, have not had a relationship with my father, 63, in roughly 18 years. My mother died when I was 6, and he remarried when I was 10. His wife who I'll refer to as B has always treated me terribly, I can remember more than one meal, where she forgot to make enough for everyone, so she made me a peanut butter sandwich, she knew I was allergic to peanuts. Then she'd yell at me for being ungrateful and I wouldn't get dinner at all. She forgot me more than once at stores. I was also quite frequently left to watch her children who destroyed my belongings and wouldn't listen. My father always blew it off. I was too sensitive, it must have been an accident, I needed to understand it was a big adjustment for her kids, I just needed to get over it. When I turned 16, B gave me a gift that she said was from the whole family. Eviction papers. My father just said it was for the best. I had nowhere to go and no job. I couch surfed for two years until I thankfully got a scholarship and left for college. I started going to therapy and after a lot of years realized I wasn't the problem. That I was put into a terrible position and the person who was supposed to protect me didn't. Here's where I'm probably the idiot. I received a letter from my father, B is sick and they're trying to find a bone marrow match. I was incredulous. He actually wanted me to get tested to see if I could save the idiot who made my life hell for years. I was furious and a whole ton of resentment came back. I threw the letter away. Any other letter I marked returned to sender. I know I should probably be the bigger person and get tested, but I'm still so resentful of everything she put me through and everything my dad allowed to happen. Maybe it's me, but if you threw your kid away you don't get to ask them for anything ever. And before anyone asks, yes, I am still in therapy. So, am I the idiot for refusing to get tested to see if I'm a match for my father's sick wife? Not the idiot. Please, don't for one second think you're an idiot for not getting tested for someone who actively abused you. She wouldn't make enough for dinner, but then make your food you're allergic to, just so she'd have a reason to complain about you being ungrateful, and your father just allowed that to happen. He failed you. She left you at stores, and it was never brought up. You have failed again. Her kids were allowed to destroy your belongings, and no consequences were given. All the children were failed because those kids could act up worse later. They evicted you at 16 which is illegal in most places that I know of and now have the audacity to ask you to get tested to help her. They failed you for years, you owe them nothing. I'll start by saying not the idiot. Now your story made me so angry that I was about to suggest you get tested, find you're a match, inform them you're a match, but refuse to donate. But then I realized that would be an idiot move and you cutting contact as being the bigger person. You're doing the right thing. That lady was a monster to you, but more importantly the man that was supposed to protect you didn't. I know your mom would be devastated. Your mental health is far more important than getting mixed back into these people's lives. Not the idiot 100%. And it is fine to throw away the letter if you want. Think of it this way, if you got tested and were a match, would you, in fact, donate your bone marrow to her? Or would you withhold it, with all of you knowing that you were a match, but chose not to help? If you know that you absolutely would not donate, then don't bother because the only purpose the testing would serve would be revenge. I, 27, had a disagreement with a fairly close friend, 30. She has a 2.5-year-old son, I have a 5-month-old daughter. She kept joking about them being boyfriend and girlfriend getting married when they're older. Fine, whatever. But then she started encouraging her 2.5-year-old that my baby is his girlfriend. He started constantly trying to kiss her on the lips. I asked my friend to stop encouraging this as, 1, I don't feel comfortable and don't consider it age-appropriate behavior and, 2, he goes to nursery and it's sick season. I don't want anyone kissing my baby. She blew up saying I'm overreacting. She brought the abuse I suffered as a child into it and threw it in my face saying my baggage has screwed me up. I told her that the argument of whether or not it was appropriate aside, I almost lost my oldest to RSB as a child and don't want anyone kissing my baby and making her sick. She continued to encourage her son to kiss my daughter. I told her she is no longer welcome in my home and that I cannot be friends with someone who will not respect boundaries that I set for myself of children. She freaked out calling me many choice names in front of my children and I told her if she didn't leave, I would call the police. We have been friends for nearly four years. And I feel awful ending that, but I really feel strongly about my boundaries not being respected. Am I the idiot? 
I feel like maybe I could have overreacted like she said, so maybe I could be. But I also feel like regardless of my reasons, what I say with my child goes and should be respected. Not the idiot. You said your issue wasn't the boyfriend or girlfriend thing, though that is concerning to be honest, but the fact that a toddler was kissing your baby. You ask her to stop, which is a reasonable boundary. She's the one who not only blew up, which is an overreaction, but kept telling her son to kiss your daughter. Why would you spend time with someone who ignores your boundaries like that? People who romanticize children's relationships are so weird. A friend of my aunt once threw a play wedding at their cabin for one of my cousins and one of her daughters. They were like six years old at the time. My cousin, who is 24 now, is gay. This remains one of his most uncomfortable childhood moments. Her bringing in your past abuse is a disgustingly low blow. As your friend, she should respect your boundaries, even if she doesn't necessarily agree with them. I wouldn't let people kiss my babies on the lips either, not even adults. The herpes simplex virus that causes cold sores in adults can be fatal to babies, especially those under six months of age. And we're in a pandemic, for God's sake. Not the idiot. You phrased it right and clear. You protected your daughter from being kissed involuntarily and taught her about consent. It doesn't seem normal that an almost three-year-old kisses a newborn. If your former friend wants this to keep happening and encourages it, it's better that you aren't friends anymore. Those are not the company nor influence you want to revolve you. I, 26, work in a busy lab, medical diagnostics, and every Friday we go as team, six or seven people, to a local sports bar to have a team building lunch on the boss's company card. Yesterday our boss was swamped with deadlines, but said the rest of us could go anyway, as long as we paid for any alcoholic drinks ourselves. Usually, the boss plus one or two other people will order a small beer with their lunch, so I have consumed alcohol on the clock before in this job. I was even thinking that without the boss there, that I might order a big beer this time. When we arrived though, me and my work bro, 25, were drawn to a new offer the bar had on tequila shots, 5 for $10. In our defense, we had just had a very stressful morning, so we proposed to the team that we buy a single round of shots to commemorate it. A couple of our colleagues were a little reluctant, but after a little convincing we were soon toasting to a morning of hard work. That's when my work bro proposed we order a second round of shots. I have a pretty high tolerance to alcohol, so it was no problem with me. I knew for a fact we have a couple of lightweight colleagues, for example, a diminutive Asian lady who rarely drinks, 23, but we still managed to convince the rest of the table to drink with us a second time. After that, the two females with us tapped out, but the three remaining guys, myself included, decided to split 10 further tequila shots. In our defense, as far as team building goes, the outing was a roaring success. I think I learned more about my colleagues in those 1.5 hours than I have in the last two years. Unfortunately, when we got back to the office, our boss could smell the tequila on my breath. My work bro, very stupidly, decided to be honest and told him that some of us had had five plus shots of alcohol at lunch. My boss's face turned bright freaking red and he told us all to go home immediately and that it wasn't safe for us to be working in a lab while inebriated. I calmly explained to him that I in fact still felt very sober, I have a very high tolerance remember, but he wasn't having it. I'm genuinely worried about what's going to happen on Monday morning. The two female colleagues called me and my work bro idiots for taking it too far and getting everyone into trouble. I see their point of view, but on the other hand, we did have a really good time while at the bar. Am I the idiot? Everyone's the idiot here. Except your boss. You, however, need to look deep at your relationship with alcohol if you think five shots of tequila is no big deal. And you need to to look deep at your career if you think that drinking at lunch wouldn't potentially cause real problems. You work in a lab. You are part of a process where medical information is gathered and resulted. Even a slight error on your part could have resulted in a real person getting the wrong amount of a medication. Healthcare is a higher responsibility, know that or get out of the field. You are a major idiot and you are an alcoholic. You bro need help. My best friend is an alcoholic and you sound exactly like him. I have a high tolerance as the first and most warning signal that you drink way too much. And yes. It mostly has to do with how much you drink. And the fact that you misuse the card your boss gave you on drinking instead of lunchtime shows how untrustworthy of a person you are. 
also a huge sign that you are an alcoholic. And the biggest thing that makes you a major idiot is that you and your bro convinced your co-workers to do the same irresponsible crap that you did and get wasted so much that your boss could smell how intoxicated you made yourself at lunchtime. You're the idiot. If you seriously cannot see the difference between a small beer and five tequila shots while working a job that has such an important and direct impact on people's health and finances, then you should be fired, both for the behavior at lunch and for your poor judgment in general. I've paid hundreds in medical lab bills this year, the idea that the technician could be drinking on the job is actually horrifying. I don't care how high of a tolerance you think you have. Clearly, the alcohol did impair some people's judgment to some extent if they were opening up much more than usual, as you said. If you are able to find a new job after you hopefully get fired, save the team building for after work. A few days ago I, 22, went grocery shopping after work. While waiting in line, a mother and daughter, 5 years old at most, were chatting right behind me. I didn't really pay attention to them until the girl told her mom to lean down, and she whispered the way kids try to mom, why is the lady in front of us so ugly? The poor mother was mortified and immediately apologized to me over and over again and had her daughter apologize as well. I accepted it and said no worries to ease her nerves because, well, it's a kid and they blurt stuff out. It happens and her observation wasn't even incorrect unfortunately. On the other hand, I've been having an awful week and couldn't stop myself from crying after turning back around. I have awful self-confidence, and while I knew the child wasn't being malicious it still hurt. There were still two people in front of me, and I waited in line trying not to be too noticeable. While I wasn't wailing or anything you could probably hear me sniffling, and my eyes were definitely red and puffy by the time I checked out and basically ran outside. My roommates noticed I had been crying when I got home and asked me what had happened, but when I told them they said I was being a jerk. They said I should have just left my groceries there and gone home, and that I probably embarrassed the mother even more in front of everyone, because I was being dramatic. To be honest I thought about leaving the line and putting my cart off to the side. I could have done that, left and come back the next day to shop, but I had no food for myself at home and didn't want to not eat for basically a day since I start work early and can't afford to eat out. Am I the idiot? I'm so sorry that happened. You're not the idiot for how you feel or for how you reacted. You didn't yell at the child and her mom, you didn't cause a huge scene, you didn't lash out, you accepted the apology and tried to deal with your feelings quietly, it's not like you were outright wailing in the grocery line to the point that everyone in the store was staring at you. And just because it's developmentally appropriate for a five-year-old child to blur things out like that doesn't make it hurt any less. I genuinely hate how our society tries to protect children from learning their behavior has consequences. When you say mean things about someone, you hurt their feelings, and feeling the guilt and pain of making someone cry teaches them not to be jerks. You weren't being manipulative, that was your genuine reaction, and that kid will hopefully think twice before saying something like that to someone else again. Kids are not porcelain dolls. Spoiling them makes them idiots. It is totally fine for kids to feel the pain of consequences that arise from their actions. Not the idiot all day long. You are allowed to be human. Being dramatic would be doing it on purpose for attention, which you didn't do. You also don't have to prioritize everyone else over yourself at a moment's notice, no matter the cost to yourself. Nobody really did anything wrong here. The young girl is innocent, the mother was apologetic, and you coped your best in the moment. I am a single dad to three kids of my own. We have two dogs, a German Shepherd and an English Bulldog. Both dogs are very friendly and well-mannered. The neighbor has a kid about the same age as my oldest son, 10, and another that's just a year or so younger. They used to come over and play a lot, but then my son and the older son decided they don't like each other much. The kids next door don't have a dog of their own. Occasionally the kids from next door would come over and get the dogs. They'd ring the doorbell and ask if they could take the dogs next door to play. I'd always say sure. Their yard is fenced and the dogs do fine. A couple weeks ago though the German Shepherd got away from them and we spent half a day looking for her. Then animal control called and said they had her and I had to pay a $125 dog at large fee to get her back. Since then I haven't let the kids take either dog next door. Because they also don't get along with my son, I don't let them come to my yard to play with them. 
Their mom rang my doorbell yesterday, saying it was unfair that they can't play with the dogs because they love dogs and didn't mean to let the shepherd run loose. I recommended she take them to the shelter and adopt a dog for them. It was a sincere recommendation, but she thought I was being cute. She has flipped me off twice today in passing. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. They are your dogs, not public property. The neighborhood kids don't have rights to play with them when they want. You were doing them a favor letting them play with the dogs in the first place, and you were within your rights to revoke that at any time. The kids, through their irresponsibility, already cost you money to get your dog back. If the mother really wanted to mend fences and convince you to let her kids play with the dogs again, she would have taken responsibility for her children's actions and reimbursed you for the money you had to pay to animal control. Actually, I think the neighbor should have paid the fine, especially since the kids broke the terms of the agreement. You don't owe anyone access to your dog, especially if they are going to be irresponsible in a way that is costly to you. What I'd something more serious had happened when the dog got out, he could have been hit or otherwise injured. It's not worth risking another screw up. You were right, she can get her kids a dog of their own, if it means that much to them. You were more generous than I would have been, and they broke one of your terms. This isn't a toy that can be replaced, this is your dog. Also, they don't even need to adopt a dog. She can take them to the shelter, and they can volunteer to take the dogs for walks and playtime. It helps socialize the dogs, it allows them to interact with dogs in a controlled environment, and it is great for the kids and their resumes if they continue volunteering. I personally would never let my dogs into someone else's back garden without my supervision, which shows great kindness and trust on your part. I would have even billed their mother for the 125 to get your dog back. But even so, I do not think you are the idiot for not allowing them to play. Totally reasonable that you don't want the neighbor's children in your back garden, if your son does not get along with one, you do not want your child feeling uncomfortable in their own home. I especially do not think you are the idiot when they broke the rules you had clearly laid out to them. Explain to the kids and the mother that you do not want them playing with a dog. If they want to play with one, then they'll have to get their own. 